I'd like to to systematically summarize this. Systematically summarizing means to to come to conclusion, to, to framework or to foundation, kind of uh, conclusion from here. Meaning, they are contestable, or this, this framework is contestable. It's just an attempt. And an attempt has this double meaning of it's one, it, it is an attempt and it is one possible attempt. And you can take different approaches there. A, a kind of underlying if you want Wittgensteinian thesis or uh, presumption is, we can only start from what we know. We, we start from, that was Wittgenstein uh, basically saying, in, in some way it is not possible to think something entirely new because we start from what we know. And we cannot start from what we don't know yet. So we always make reference to our knowledge, to our way of thinking, and this is not least the nation state and the development of nation states so far. We know that it is limited because the, the ancient states had been completely different to what we have now. But even there we refer to states, to ancient states and then modern states. Anyway, in one way or another, all what I'm going to say is, is caught in this idea. We have a certain framework uh, from which we, we start or which we refer to. And this is the state and very much what, what is going on today is very much going on in a way of, I wouldn't say repeating what developed on the nation, national level, but it is uh, always making reference to it and saying uh, or looking at what happened there. And what you mentioned and discussed in terms of developments or failure, non-failure, successes, is something that we know in some way, in one way or another, from national developments. So the one thing is, in analytical terms, we have an institutional perspective we have certain uh, institutions of the European Parliament we talked about. And we have what had been mentioned, uh, international and intergovernmental orientations or politics, which is a matter of institutional frameworks. It does not say anything as such on substance. It's just an institutional structure we are looking at and uh, there in a way we fail because we automatically say or make reference to some substantial issues. I never felt having so much influence on the national level, looking at the parliament, then I have the impression on the international or on the European level. So we add substance. But we take the reference, the first reference point is the institution, and then we compare it with what happened there, looking at the European level now, in comparison to what I know from my national level, or from national levels.
compare with it. And then we can say, well, in, in some respect it, it came through, I'm, I'm not interested in, 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 in institutions. I'm interested in what happens effectively. In which way it's organized, it doesn't matter. I'm looking only, bottom line, what is the result of it. So different approaches to analyzing and to assessing uh, what we have. The typical example is actually there uh, that we consider the European Union as a state or uh, an, an emerging state um, and refer to it as a possible state of the future, replacing the nation states in different ways. And then we have, of course, first and foremost, coming up, the economic dimension. This is, a, if you, if you want, the major uh, reference point, because this is, of course, the one that has a major effect on our daily life. Without an economic foundation, Nothing is going to happen and we don't know how to deal basically with daily life, and that's what it is about, uh, without having some kind of economic foundation. In this way, the European Union had been always despite the political project, despite the community aspect, had been always about uh, the economic integration. Now, you see immediately the, the limitation of such approach when you look at what you said, that was the first contribution, not the limitation of what, what, what you said, but the, the limitation of this kind of economic integration. On the one hand, it was about cohesion. Join the European Union or be part of it. And as such, we want to be a community, a union, a whatsoever of equals. We have the same standards. We have the same or similar uh, way of our economic system working, but as well in terms of cohesion. Living conditions are or should be not the same, but similar. That's why, you, why, why countries want to join the European Union or wanted to join whatever the unit had been. You don't join or you don't include somebody, somebody meaning a country, to say, yeah, we are the rich ones and you stay poor. Or, yes, it's nice to be amongst you even if we stay poor. The poor country, the underdeveloped uh, economy, or whatever. So the idea was always um, join to be part of a cohesive society. And there had been the cohesion fund, actually, as well, uh, to make it possible to have such kind of common standard. And then we have at the same time the problem of, but our advantage is actually not being on this level, of having a lower income level, of having lower standards, wage, living standards, security, 
uh, in terms of um, occupational safety and health, and and and. This advantage is something that makes us competitive or that allows us to be competitive. So you have a, a structural contradiction there that basically joining the European Union undermines the advantages you have or the other way around it gives you the additional advantage from wherever the means come to say, okay, you get some support in overcoming your, in inverted commas, underdeveloped status. So this was the first argument that came up. Questions. Is it not rather an idea of having a win-win situation for both the countries already in the European Union? And the one coming in, as in both profit from the situation, with that being the main argument for proceeding with it? Or do I misunderstand it? Something? No, you, you don't misunderstand it, but, but the, the win win situation or the win win, the meaning of the win win was understood because it was understood or is always understood. Uh, The win is basically a win situation, not a win-win. Uh, it, it goes through a phase of win-win, but it goes through this phase of win-win by we make it possible for everybody to work on the same level or to work towards the same level. And if you reach it, your advantage is, is lost. Is, is lost. So uh, the, the typical example, not from this area, but um, from, from political science is actually, uh, if everybody stands on the tiptoes, nobody can see better. So you, you need the difference, that's the argument, uh, to see better. If everybody is lifted, Nobody can see better. And, and this is the contradiction of this, of this thinking, of this analysis. Um, you need this inequality to have the advantage. And at the same time, you want to overcome this inequality. And then you are stuck because then you are reaching something that is impossible in this, within this framework. Uh, you may say, with this constellation, a win-win situation, a win-win constellation is not possible. It undermines its, itself. If everybody stands on the tiptoes, you have the same situation as you have had before. So you need a structural change there. And the structural change being impossible simply within this economic framework, which is not the neoliberal, but it is the liberal framework of an economic thinking. With, as long as you stay within this, what you said as well, you have to look for other advantages. And this is what you probably all know. Uh, Tom Marshall, 52, his little book on citizenship, uh, called Path Breaking, and in a way it was path breaking, although he considered he proposed something uh, <coughs> very basic. We are dealing with different ways of rights. Citizenship is an entity, but it consists of political 
civil, political, and social rights. And this is what you have mentioned the other way around. We have a differentiation there. We have, if you want, an economic union, we have a political union, and we have a social union, and they are not developed in the same, to the same degree, not in the same way. They are um, dependent in a way. I think this is maybe um, also the reason for the, um, um, for the change in the situation to face, because the, the money uh, is, the, is, is the main reason for um, possibilities in social systems and solidarity. So the, the, the economic growth in the European Union Maybe the basic for all our goals. Um, so this is maybe uh, something we failed at, um, just to concentrate on the capitalistic money uh, uh, grabbing. <laughs> so this is uh, because uh, if you make debts, um, you are in uh, dependence. From international money giver or European money giver, as in Greece, from German bank and stuff like this. They also make winnings. Uh, so, with, with this money they give. So, it's always a um, uh, capitalistic uh, uh, social system. So, it's always a uh, uh, growth hungry. Well, what, what Marshall said basically was, was very simple, as I said. It, it, it was really a very simple thing, that uh, looking at, at the historical development, you have had first political rights. Uh, no, you, you first have had this, this civil, the, the civil rights uh, of, of um, yes, you are a human being. Something we, we have to, to consider as a huge uh, step forward. Uh, you are considered to be a human being, and with this you have rights uh, because you 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 are human being. Uh, you have you have a say, but in order to have a say, it's not enough to say yes. You can say everything you want, but there is no place to say it. So this was the step then to have political rights in terms of you have to have institutions that make it possible to say what you have to say. One of the basic institutions, of course, the elections and the parliament and having your representatives and then having not only your say there, but you have fora, you have the right as well to be informed, uh, to have not just an opinion to say, well, today I think this, but, but you have to make up, you have to have the ability to have an opinion. And then you see immediately, of course, I can say, I give you this right as well, political right, to have your say, but you have to have the information. And from where do you get the information? For instance, from education. Education is something, a social provision. Because it's not only to inform you, but you have to have basic skills like reading and writing. Today it is computer skills. Um, you have to have the time uh, to avail of it. You have to be in a healthy, you have to live under healthy conditions that you are not worrying permanently about uh, what is going to on tomorrow. Uh, will I be suffering from this and that illness? And if I'm suffering from this, what, what is going on there? Um, so this, and this would be my, my critique, not only my critique, uh, with Marshall. Of course, it, it depends on each other. Uh, you, Marshall was, was going on <coughs> and, and saying there is this, this sequence. The first one, then the other, and then the third one. Where I would say 
uh, you cannot have first civil rights uh, if you don't have a, a minimum of social standards secured. And you, you cannot even talk about civil rights or social rights if there is not an institution mechanism uh, that is providing some kind of framework. Um, and this is something, it's, it's coming back to the, to the beginning really of today, this makes it exciting to think about it because we cannot think about it. We, 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 there, there is no point in saying, okay, this is the date, then the constitution had been decided upon or, or whatsoever. It, it is this process of values we talked about where it is extremely difficult <coughs> to make out what these values are. Because on the one hand, what, what had been said there is, yes, we have human rights and we all signed with the constitution or, or the, the, the countries, not all, everything, but there, there was this signature accepting human rights as a basic value. And if you do not accept human rights, you are out, kind of, simplified. But then, having said this, it is what we call iterative process. So you have some very general um, consideration, values of what human existences. We, we can't go into detail here, but if you look actually at the, at the human rights agenda, we always refer to the Universal Declaration and say this is what defines human rights. If you look into detail what constitutes human rights today, this is completely, I wouldn't say nonsense, but it's so limited. <coughs> if you look at all the conventions and all the editions, and then you have others. And this is why I said as well, uh, European countries, e-European countries, not every country signed all documents that are relevant. And still they are considered to refer to some basic idea of, yes, they comply with human rights. Declaration on children, or on, on children, children's rights. Are they human rights or are they not human rights? To which extent is it necessary to codify them separately? Because, of course, every child is a human being. So why should we need additional children's rights? They have their rights. They are human beings. But no, we say there is a, a, a different story. So in this way, values are iterative. In terms of they are becoming more and more uh, defined and codified. First we say, great, human rights, children are included, women are included, of course, there is no problem. And then we say, no, it's not enough. I saw a poster here um, on, on um, <clears throat> uh, shelter homes for women, battered women. Basically, they are not necessary. They have their rights, so it's on, on the general level, everything is fine. But then we say, no, we need an additional 
as well codification or social right in terms of in reality there is no equality so we have to establish reality by a new codification. Now mind um, this is of course somewhat ambivalent. On the one hand we have to address these issues because there are serious problems with children, with child labor, with the definition of a child, uh, women and, and, and. At the same time, every codification means, of course, as well, not a strangulation, but a limitation. If you are the typical thing is nationality, uh, citizenship, bound to nationality. Are you... Well, we can, can refer to something that had been mentioned, actually. Uh, voting rights. You live in... You are Austrian. Born Austrian. Blood is Austrian and soil is Austrian and everything that is usually referred to. These are the two criteria, blood and, and soil. And then you move to, I don't know where, to Spain. It's always the sun is shining, people supposedly want to go there. Um, and then you live in Spain for 30 years, maintaining your passport, maintaining your citizenship not considering Spanish citizenship. You are registered there. You have a little special card. This is not the Spanish one. So you are kind of citizen of the other country. And then you see something on the back only not um, what is it? Not valid in another country outside of Italy, outside of Spain or wherever. So you are not citizen, and you are allowed for the thirty years voting in, in Austria, even if you live thirty years in Spain, in Italy, in wherever. You definitely know more about that country in terms of political culture, in terms of politicians, in terms of the voting system, and, and, and. Let's consider you move with, with 15 or 18 to the other country, but you have the citizenship. You are allowed to vote in the country of your citizenship, but you are not allowed to vote in the country where you are actually living and where you are making this experience. Uh, Formal criteria, of course, you are Austrian citizenship. If you are taking other criteria, what's the point? You are not really Austrian citizenship just by accident of hanging this passport. But this is different on different levels. So, on uh, the level of cities, no. I have the right to vote in the city of a foreign, uh, of a other EU member state city, when I lived there. Yeah. No, actually, this, this was, when, when I started, I wanted to, to exactly point this out. This is even more important and, and even more uh, differentiating. So you are a, a citizen citizen of the country where you live, but you are national citizen of the country where you had been born. So I am national Austrian, but you are a citizen in Spain. Uh, taking the European Union now, you are European and can vote for your European parliamentarians, of course. Parliament elections, there was this one guy 
who had the dual citizenship of Germany and Italy, and he voted, for example, twice, once in Germany and once in the Italian embassy in Germany. Okay. And now, like they say, that uh, it should have been like punished, but it's also an interesting, I think, subject to discuss about. Well, I don't know the the German. I, I thought at some stage it is possible to have dual citizenship. At some stage they said, no, it is not. Because I recently read it in Politico, and it was just a really interesting article because he can, and he did. But now they say that it was not a right thing to do. Against him, mind. Not, exactly. not against the countries. <laughs> No, no, against him, but actually, uh, if nobody uh, awards you to do that, if they allowed you, then why not to do it? Now he's no. charged. Uh, just to this, in Austria, the legislation is as following you are allowed to have dual citizenship if the other country whose uh, citizenship you plan on taking on also uh, allows for you to have two citizenships at the same time. So an example with a Turkish one, it would not work because the Turkish uh, citizenship is uh, one which does not allow you to have a second citizenship on the side. Well, Turkish citizenship allows you to yeah. have an Austrian citizenship, but Austrian citizenship doesn't allow it with Turkey because it's depending on the inter like inter uh, countries relations. Okay, no. It always depends on the state to which state. I got a letter from the um, government here. I have I have my voting card at home. I'm flying home for my birthday next week, but our EU elections are on that day, and I have my voting card at home for it, but I also got one here from the government here. So, like, I don't know if somebody would have stopped me if I had went to vote here, but I could have. I had the option to. I have two voting cards. In fact, they were telling me that if I was out of the country, that I could mail vote here. So I could, in fact, vote, vote, vote. And it wouldn't be my fault if I did, because there's nothing telling me that I can't do it. I'm not going to, but it's a possibility. <laughs> a friend of mine told me exactly the same thing with Austria and Germany. And he also said he could have uh, voted in both countries if he wanted to. Yeah. For the EU elections, uh, but but sometimes it's simply a, an administrative error. But I that's have, something. I have multiple friends that live in Austria and got like cards here to vote here in the European elections, and also have them in like Italy. I know Italians who have it. I mm. know um, uh, someone from the UK as well. Uh, yeah, I know numerous people who have them. Uh, well, sometimes it's an, it's an administrative error, and sometimes it is, it is an administrative error of the of the system. Yeah. That the system actually doesn't get this right to, to really uh, adapt the different uh, mechanisms of, of uh, registering, getting into the life register, voting register, and stuff, um, and. It's, it's a difficult, well, in, in detail, it's sometimes a difficult question. The, the principle should be clear uh, of differentiated status of, of citizenship. Mm. That's the, the, the mm. most important part here, that uh, the, the, the citizenship which would be defined here uh, has, or, or there are two problems with it. The one is that we have a huge difference between economic, uh, political, econo uh, civil, uh, political, and, and social rights. The economic would be part of the so of, of the social. That we have huge problems there in terms of divergence, lack of convergence between countries and within countries. And the other is uh, that the citizenship, uh, as such in legal terms, is not clearly defined because we have different citizens, different criteria. 
it's as as well to some extent, although within Europe it's not not such a huge uh, problem, um, that the so-called process of naturalization uh, is following sometimes different rules, uh, <clears throat> and of course. This is a one one of the problems we, we have to discuss uh, when it comes to any kind of integration. Um, we shouldn't overestimate it, but there is this point of national identity. What makes national identity? Do we actually need one national identity? Um, do, you, do, do we have it automatically? Uh, and what is the meaning of it? Then you come to, to these points where the 15-year-old or 10-year-old is brought by the parents to another country, um, speaks vaguely uh, the country of the, the country of origin, because actually his parents had been, uh, the, the, the mother was German and, and the father was Irish, they lived in Germany, uh, they had been bilingual at home already, so the, the kid comes to Ireland, speaks only, more or less only uh, English now, and Irish, uh, forgets the German, and uh, stands there and doesn't really know about German identity, getting the sauerkraut and whatever you, you need as, as, as part of it, yes. Um, it is amazing actually how much food matters in terms of if you, if you go. Um, but what, what is the, the, the national identity there? Um, and then saying the, the food makes a huge has, has an, uh, an important role to play, uh, is relevant as well. Sometimes you have something like this, like attitudes, like values of what does solidarity mean um, in concrete terms. It's not only the, and, and not primarily the, the social insurance system. It is uh, actually a, a, an interesting point um, from an old study, uh, health systems in Europe, people accessing their health system, national health system. And health system, you can say, it's always a matter of solidarity. You have a public, have had a public health system saying you are a citizen of the country, that's what I had been told when I went to the doctor in, in Italy. You are a citizen, show me your identity card, fine, that's it. Uh, if you go in Germany, you have to show your health card, your health insurance card, and then, and that's it. And the point in, I, I wanted to make now is, the study showed in Germany, people are reluctant to go to the doctor in many cases, whereas in France they go to the doctor if they feel like it. The reason is their national identity in a way that the Germans say, I am responsible, co-responsible for the German health insurance system. And whenever I can save money for this system, I do it. That's my responsibility as German citizen. Whereas the French says, je suis français. My right as French citizen is going to the doctor when I think it's necessary. Full stop. Whatever it costs, that's not my problem. That's our problem. Because it is our problem, I'm part of our, it is my problem but I am not supposed to save money for us. I'm supposed to look after my health. So small things, apparently small things, very important. Um, 
what is the, the, the role national identity plays? And of course, if you are socialized in, in a German spirit, in a French citizen uh, spirit or whatever, there is something of you even if you leave the country with, with five years or ten. At the same time, there was at some stage, I don't know actually how I was worrying when I faced this, or, or I, I hoped that I would not face it and I didn't face it, uh, going back at some stage to Germany, if they would ask me questions, uh, if, if, you, um, if you apply for German citizenship, uh, it, I think it is still and even more so the, the case, you have to answer certain questions. Um, supposedly identifying identity. There had been some questions where I thought, please don't ask me this. I'm kind of educated, but I don't have a clue where this and that painting is in which museum. And even if I'm kind of arts interested and arts educated, certain paintings I wouldn't know. And certain paintings, I say afterwards, yes, of course, you have been there 20 times last year. But remembering it, no. Um, language. Is language necessary if you live in a, another country? Is it necessary to speak the language? Or is the state, the hosting state, responsible to give you especially if you are talking about European Union, to provide the information in your language. You find in many cases, you find exactly uh, this. Uh, that uh, official information is provided by uh, well, by, by the municipalities or by doctors as well now in five languages or ten languages. Not in every language, but they say, okay, there are so many people living from this and that country. Uh, we provide this in Polish, in Turkish, in I don't know what, Austrian. Um, is it okay or should we say, well, at least you have to speak the language. At least you have to know what democracy means that you are supposed to go to the elections every so often. So this is something um, in terms of values as well, uh, that, that we are kind of growing into it, into a certain understanding. And you mentioned governance. This is part of governance. This is not government. Government is relatively, or it's, it's not relative, it's very clear. This is government and this is what we, uh, what, what is written down basically. Uh, the institutional structure. What is international, what is, uh, uh, what, what is um, intergovernment. <coughs> inter-government. This is as well where every politician knows. Yeah, this is the rule. I cannot decide for them. Uh, but then we have other points where we have the problem, really, uh, participation of NGOs, civil society. Um, the amount of legislation not controlled anymore by the legislator, but by the uh, constitutional courts. Today, the constitutional courts are more important, I'd say, in terms of legislation than the actual legislator. If you go through uh, the, the, the law, pro, the, the process of, of uh, legislation, you find the most, at least the most important laws uh, decided by the parliament, 
being immediately brought to the constitutional court, who has then to decide is this constitutional or not. Um, it's an amazing process. And of course it is as well an amazing process if we think about the amount today of what is legislated. We have an increasing body of legislation. And this is what I said before. We have to look at least, we have to see the ambiguity uh, of not talking about values in a very general way. We need then the, the additional codification. But even if it is not contract law, all this means as well, what is defined here in the treaty is valid. What is not defined here is not only not valid, but it's not a topic. That's the problem. If it's not defined here, it's not a topic. In contract law, it is very clear. Purchasing products, the typical thing, selling purchasing products, you agree upon in a contract, written down or not, I have a computer uh, with a hard drive, I don't know, well, I, I should say I, I, I buy a car, it has four wheels, it has a steering mechanism, it has, it has brakes, and it has an engine of 100, uh, what, what is it today? I don't know what they measure actually, um, a certain strength, strength of the engine. That's agreed upon, and that's what you get. At least you have a right to get this if this is written down in the contract. There's no way of saying, well, actually the engine is not as strong as I said originally, then you can go to court. Or if you say, this engine is, is much too, too strong for me, I want just a small one, uh, you can say, well, I, I want to have this exchanged. And I don't want to have three wheels or five wheels, I want to have four. That's what we agree. That's clearly defined. And you are not talking about a driver. Because you thought, buying a car, I need a driver as well. That's your problem. You bought a car, not a car with a driver. That's an additional contract. Um, so that is clearly defined. And you are not even talking about the driver. You are not talking about anything that is not part of the contract. And that's the same with rights, values. What is so nice with values in a general term is hugely problematic as a, as, at the same time and vice versa. Values, I can put everything into it. That's why I kind of insisted, be precise. What is, what, what do you understand as value? Solidarity? Great. Solidarity is treating everybody equal or supporting those who are, for whatever reason, weak in a certain area. Solidarity is if I support you, even if you could get there on your own, or the other way around. I know you could do on your own, but why shouldn't I help you? Why shouldn't I support you if I have the means? Sit in a wheelchair. Do you help somebody or look at somebody who is in the wheelchair? And if you see how difficult it is, do you go there, I'm going the same way, I can push you a little bit? Or do you say, well, you can do it, why should I? 
It's good for your arms. Arms. So it's it's yeah. It is sometimes small small things where you have people, disabled people. In some cases, they want support. They, in some cases, they need support. In some cases, they are glad to get support. And in other cases, they say, "Why? I can't do this. There's no problem for me to do it." And it is a matter of solidarity concretely defined. And it is, of course, what I said before, the health system, um, health insurance system. I am citizen, I go to the doctor. Why shouldn't I? This is solidarity that I'm looking after myself. Whereas the other says, solidarity, I don't go to the doctor. This is solidarity because I save money for the insurance funds. Human rights. We have two, at least two agendas of human rights. That's what, call, what is called the Universal Declaration. And then we have an Islamic Declaration of Human Rights. It, it, it claims equally, and I would say with equal rights, to be Universal Declaration. So, it is something, I'm, I'm just thinking about as well, then the more detailed uh, interpretation. Um, what do you do with this? When Europe refers to, this is a nice, nice example actually, Europe refers to be um, What's the name? A secular unity without religion. You, you, religious freedom, that's, that's the reference. At the same time, if you look at the, what should have been the constitution, you see a special provision for Christianity. Christian organizations have a special status. Why? And then you say, because of the Christian values, we have actually what we have in place as a legal system. It is based on Christian values. And our legal system, even if it is a secular system, is going back to the Christian values. First, I want to say I was wrong about citizenship, what you said earlier is wrong. Uh, and secondly, what you just said about um, Christian ideas, and even I think when the European basic contract, so what is the closest to a European constitution, was written up, there was some discussion about it uh, whether there should be something included that refers to the, I'm not sure what the exact the terminology was, Christo Judean tradition of this mm -hmm. idea. Can you say a bit more on this? Is, was that actually the case? Well, we have had this, this discussion, exactly this discussion, and there is something in it in the Lisboa Treaty. treaty. Lisbon de, uh, explicitly defines, I don't know the wording, uh, defines a special uh, protection, basically, a special role for the Christian, uh, Christian Judaic uh, organizations or, or faith. Uh, <clears throat> I would have to look it up in, in the treaties what exactly stands there, but, but there is a privileged situation. And we have had a definition, a discussion about it, saying actually basically there is no, no not, a, not, not a reason, but there is a reason not to have it. Because these organizations are nothing special. If we protect them, if we have so special support for them, uh, <clears throat> we have to have special provisions for animal welfare. 
für, äh, für Car Drivers. The German ADAC, the German, what, what is it? Um, it's it's one, one of these organizations looking, it's, it's a, there, there's a similar here in Austria. Yeah, um, it's either IRB. There are two organizations in Austria. Oh, uh, well, because we have this true, difference true. between the UFB organization and the SPÖ organization. Pluralism. Uh, but but well, well, this is in Germany one, and it's supposedly the largest association where kind of people are member, for, for not because they are necessarily in favor of this uh, private transport, but because it's a kind of support mechanism. If you are stuck, uh, they come and help you. And then they say, uh, actually, would you like to sign? Um, and then you say, uh, not really. And, but but next time you are calling us again. Uh, okay, uh, so why not having a special provision for them? The car lobby in, in Europe is huge. So why not for them? Why for Christians? Uh, the Christians have it. The private car industry didn't claim for it. Possibly they would have gone through with it. Um, but then you, you, you say, in, in any case, you have this reference in, uh, in, in law, in, in the legal thinking, to Christian thinking. I'm, I'm not into it into detail, but if you, say, if, if you look at um, what would be the relevant uh, legislation there, if you look at the discussions about uh, Sharia, there is nothing wrong with Sharia. In many, in, in the view of many, they say it's all what is said, inequality, the low position of women, and and and. It's not true. It's not in Sharia. That's a misunderstanding. A misinterpretation of Islam and a wrong interpretation of Sharia. I don't know. From the little I know, I can only say it does not explicitly say definitely, yes, there is this inequality, yes, there is this punishment. And, and, and. Um, you can say in many cases as well, Christian legislation or Christian-based legislation has so much about inequality, has so much about discrimination, that I can easily say, well, this law is something I don't want. Uh, at least we have to look at the, uh, at the difficulties of defining it. And this means as well we have to say at least what we understand usually as human rights is not without problems. It's as well in the economic systems, uh, Article 23 of the Human Rights, Uni Universal Declaration of Human Rights, says something like the right to employment. It says the right and obligation to employment, which means it's the commitment to capitalist economic system. Sorry, that's it. And that's something where I would have my doubts to sign freely, say, yes, this is definitely and absolutely a human right. A human right is, for me, independent of, of the choice of the economic formation, I have a right to make my living. If you look at what happened with the uh, developing countries, so-called developing countries, they had been committed on this European, on, on the capitalist pathway, went down, the development went down with it, and now they have to claim human rights on a different level. Why do you think that the uh, uh, 
human right for employment can only exist under a capitalist system. Could it not also exist under a socialist, let's say, a system where the, or a, I'm not sure what the English term for it is, but where basically the means of production are owned by the people employed. Could it not work in that kind of system as well? Having this human right? No, because they wouldn't be employed, but they would be there is a difference between employment and, and working. You have a right to work, and you may even, I, I would go with that, you have the obligation to work, but not employed. Employed is, in my understanding, and the common language, English language, it is always being employed by somebody. And you are working for somebody, not for yourself. And in this way, I understand it as strictly as capitalist uh, tool. Um, else, yes, of course. But but there, I would talk about uh, the, the right to work, not to employment. Uh, at least it shows institutional level. We have to look at that. Seeing the institutional level always as a means to an end, and the ends are in different ways defined by a system of values, but of values in terms of an economic system of setting something into place that allows actually people uh, to, to live self-determined and to engage in different ways in the social context. Europe, European Union, European integration, tried in many cases, I think honestly, to work towards it, but at the same time never really addressed the need, the, the essential necessity of structurally binding this together. We may have an analytical differentiation between uh, civil rights and uh, <clears throat> down political and, and social rights, but this can only be analytical. And the European project, in my opinion, my interpretation, was very much working on this general level of, yes, we are citizens of the European Union. And there you find actually something funny. The treaty now states the citizenship of, we, we are all European citizens, but basically it doesn't provide any right to you. If you go wherever, whatever you want, what is your nationality? You have to produce your national passport. If it's European country, fine. If not, you have additional problem. But if it is uh, Europe, if, if, it's, if you are German, if you are Austrian, uh, moving to Ireland, or the other way around, what's your passport? Right? Austrian. Not one of us. At least... And there you find, uh, in many cases, actually a difference, at least on the structural level. If you go to the police station in many countries, I did, did so in, in Ireland, uh, for, for whatever reasons I, I went there, uh, asking, by the way, my registration at the time, they said, don't worry, you are a European citizen. That's it. So this is another difference, uh, another tension, uh, we, we do not have a real demos, European demos, when it comes to political rights. But at the same time, in the mind of many people, I guess we have it, or it is artificially uh, hindered to develop. 
because of competition, because then you come back to this point again, your advantage is being disadvantaged. So my advantage is being advantaged. So stay where you are and uh, we may all step up standing on our tiptoes, but I still want to see better. So we have break now. And